أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد باي ذا بارك أوف سيدي الشيخ سيدي محمد فوزي الكركري قدس الله سره Notes from Mudakara of February 10, 2024 before starting this video, I would like to say that this work would never have seen the light without Sidi Shair. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from Sidi Shair. Sidi Shair starts this part by reference to a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, in which he affirms how Allah's light descends to his creation. The Prophet wasallam said, Indeed Allah, the blessed and exalted, created his creation in darkness, then he cast his light upon them. So whoever is touched by that light is guided, and whoever is not, he goes astray. It's for this reason that I say that the pens have dried with Allah's knowledge. Sidi Shaykh explained that the beginning part of the hadith in which the Prophet says that Allah created his creation in darkness serves to correct some wrong ideas to those who claim that their origin is light or that they are created from light. Sidi Shaykh explained that, in fact, Allah created humans in darkness, where there was no light. This is evident from the Sunnah of creation. For instance, Sayyidina Adam السلام, was not created from light, but from sounding clay like pottery, and from a humble fluid, ma'in mahim. He was created in darkness, and from this darkness Allah created the human body. Even the person in the mother's womb was created in darkness, conceived from a humble fluid, ma'in mahim, and a lustful relationship. The union of the female with the male resulted in the person's existence in darkness upon darkness. Sidi Shaykh there referred to verse 76 from Surah Sad, where Allah says, And breathed into him of my spirit. Sidi Shaykh stated that this is when the light started to flow in the human. If one considered this light merely as a spiritual flow, sarayan, and warid, which means a given or an offering, to produce life and movement, then the human will stay in darkness because this life and movement were also given to animals and plants. Allah has distinguished the human by breathing into him from his spirit. There is no session, fasl. There is a direct junction, wasl. Sidi Shaykh then spoke about the second part of the hadith, which is, then he cast his light upon them. So whoever is touched by that light is guided, and whoever is not, he goes astray. It's for this reason that I say that the pens have dried with Allah's knowledge. Sidi Shaykh explained that when the Prophet mentions that the pen has dried, it signifies that no intellect, theory, beliefs, or customary bigotries remain to be added. This is a rule that Allah has established within his pre-eternal law to be applied to the universe. If one is touched by that light, he will inherit guidance, not merely movement. His movement which conform to what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa if one's movement differs from what pleases Allah, it's not considered movement, nor life, nor guidance. His word, meaning what he received, can be considered as an animalistic word, word hayawani, as he's living a life of an animal. Sidi Shaykh said that Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was created from sounding clay like pottery, from which he gained the body. Then, Allah breathed into him from his spirit. From this breath, Sayyidina Adam السلام, has gained two things, the spirit and the knowledge. With the spirit, he learned all the divine names. All of this occurs initially in the heart, where heart refers to the inner self, al-jawf. This concept cannot be limited to a specific organ. Everything within the inward, al button of the human being has been touched by this light. It's from there that guidance begins. When guidance begins, one should understand yaql, the guidance, the knowledge, and the allusion, al-ishara of Allah's light. He understands them with his intellect. Ya'qiluha bil At that time, the intellect, al-aql, becomes rational, aql, rational to guidance, to affirmation, to theoretical knowledge, ilm khabari to theories, to thoughts, and to behaviors, before conveying them to its followers who are the faculties of the body, which are the hand, 
the hearing, the sight, etc. What the intellect, al-aql, takes from the human's inner, al-jawf, it takes it in union, jama, all together, not separately. Then, the intellect distributes it to the faculties, given a share to the hearing, a share to the sight, a share to the speech, al-kalam, a share to the hand, and a share to the food. The primary faculty to receive its share is hearing, even the fetus begins to hear while still in the mother's womb. However, the sense of sight develops later, and the baby does not see until seven days after birth, when the light of sight begins to flow in his vision. This is from an organic perspective. As for the spiritual perspective, when the light begins to flow within the person's inner, jawf, it flows like a cask, qathfa. This is what is called the Pledge of Allegiance, al bayat The Pledge of Allegiance is the comprehensive cast, al qathfa al ijmaliya When one pledges allegiance to the shaykh, he submits to the shaykh's breath, nafkha, to the breath that the shaykh has breathed into him. It's as if the shaykh will return him to the primary matter on how Allah has invented and created him. Sidi Shaykh added that at this first stage, the person or the human being has received this light in his heart. This returns him to the first and original pledge of allegiance in the era of Bala, Ahdu Bala, when Allah asked the children of Adam, Am I not your Lord? And they replied, Yes, you are. Bala, we testify. Thus, the pledge of allegiance, Al Bay'a, it's not just to raise the hand and recite the verse, Surely those who pledge allegiance to you are actually pledging allegiance to Allah. Sidi Shaykh added that if one contemplates only this verse, those who pledged allegiance to you, O oh, servant of Allah, are actually pledging allegiance to Allah, to return to Allah and to know Allah. This knowledge is not built on thoughts or contemporary philosophies. Rather, it's a knowledge inherited from the Prophet wasallam, from Prophet to Prophet, and its source is a divine revelation. It's the science of how Allah created creation. Sidi Shaykh emphasized that most people lack a true understanding of the reality of pledging allegiance, except for those upon whom Allah has bestowed his mercy. Therefore, in the tariqah, it's essential for one to possess some understanding of these aspects before pledging allegiance. This understanding should not consist of philosophical or theoretical ideas, nor should it involve the superficial use of Sufi terminology. Rather, it's about someone who applies the few things that he learned and experiences them. Those who possess only theoretical knowledge may have the appearance of a scholar, but their reality is ignorance upon ignorance. Sidi Shaykh said that when the disciple came to the Shaykh and pledged allegiance to him, the Shaykh gave him his share from Allah's given. Sidi Shaykh referred to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is the giver, and up the distributor, Al-Qasim. So who carries out this distribution after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's the Atra of Ahl al-Bayt, the elite of Ahl al-Bayt. Sidi Shaykh insisted on the importance to remember this distinction. He clarified that it's not just Ahl al-Bayt, but specifically the Atra of Ahl al-Bayt, the elite of Ahl al-Bayt. Sidi Shaykh elaborated on the difference between Ahl al-Bayt and the Atra of Ahl al-Bayt. He stated that while it's obligatory to love and behave well with Ahl al-Bayt, the instruction of the Prophet wasallam about the Atra was to hold onto them. The Atra represents the spirit, al-Ruh of Ahl al-Bayt, the number 365, corresponding to the days of the year, with each of them having a specific station at their forefront, there is one who unifies them all within himself. At his time, the Prophet wasallam specified who was at the forefront of the Atra, which is Sayyidina Ali, may Allah honor his face. Sidi Shaykh referenced to hadith of the Prophet wasallam in which he said about Sayyidina Ali, For whomever am his master, then Ali is his master. And the hadith, your light is from my light, and my light is from your light. At his time, Sayyidina Ali was himself distributing to each one who came to him his share of Allah's given of light. Sidi Shaykh said that this is a divine order, not an educational program 
or a method of hijama that one learns and applies. One would not receive anything if he does not believe that this is how it works. What one should do is search for the one who inherited the Prophet وسلم, in his time so that he receives his share from him. This person should be from Ahl al-Bayt, from the Atra of Ahl al-Bayt, and follow the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet When one finds this person from the Atra, it will not take a lot of time. He will give him the bay'ah and his share from the light. Then he will tell him that he is done with him and that he can leave if he wants and can also stay if he wants. The response will depend on the disciple's intelligence and cleverness. If he understood what he received, he will never leave the shaykh. He will do what Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam did when he asked Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam. May I follow you so that you may teach me from what you have been taught? The main objective behind this is not to receive his share, because the disciple already received it, but to have the knowledge of the share that he received. It will take time to understand the knowledge of what the disciple received, which is why Ahlullah called it the child of pure meanings, Tiflul Ma'ani. The child needs time to grow within the disciple's inner. On the other hand, receiving the share of light does not take time. Sidi Shaykh explained that just by having the attention and the belief that this Shaykh is the Wali and he is from the Atra of Al Bayt, it's a pledge of allegiance in itself. The physical pledge of allegiance with the hand is just to reassure the disciple's heart, but in reality, the attention of Bayam suffices. Later in this Mudakara, Sidi Shaykh stated that the disciple should know how to reap the fruits of his share of light. It's like having a capital, but not working with it. It will remain for one week or two weeks, or even for one year, and after that, there will be nothing. The Shaykh will then teach the disciple how to work with this light, until his hearing becomes following the Shaykh's hearing, his sight follows the Shaykh's sight, etc., as mentioned in the Hadith of the Walid. In this Hadith, Allah says, And my servant continues to draw near to me with supererogatory works, so that I shall love him. The disciple must strive to earn the Walid's love, as without it, he won't achieve anything. This path is one of love. One cannot meet the wali and demand his share. In this case, the wali may refuse. He may even deny being a wali. And this happened with multiple shuyuk in the past. Moreover, the wali may give him, but this light will be a witness against him, and he will fall to the lowest depth. So, one should strive, but not by claiming to love the wali or Allah. In reality, such declarations hold little value, as everyone is obligated to love Allah. What truly matters is whether Allah loves this person or not. What's difficult is to make supererogatory acts of worship until Allah loves him. This act should not be obligatory. For instance, loving the family of the Prophet ﷺ is obligatory. Sidi Shaykh added that loving the family of the Prophet ﷺ is different from loving the wali. One should first understand what is a wali. A wali is a role or a function, similar to someone being an accountant or a commercial agent. Just as one can say someone is a prophet, being a prophet is also a function, not a person. The person may be a man, for example, but his function is being a prophet. Sainthood, prophethood, and messengerhood are functions, divine functions, not built on philosophy or thoughts. It's not a matter of learning something and working on it to become a messenger or a prophet. If someone believes that by following a wali, he will become a wali himself, then he has understood nothing. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla in hadana Allah. Laqad jaat rasul rabbina bilhaq. Allahumma lakal hamd, Allahumma lakal hamd, Allahumma lakal hamd. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ibi Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ibi Sayyidina Ibrahim. وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين